We're <clears> bad <throat> at this. Well, we never thought we were good at it either. So. <laughs> That's fair. So we... <laughs> take it and run with it. Go on, take the money and run. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, <laughs> take the money and run. Ooh, yeah. I'm about to pick up your chair and bring it over here because I just stabbed my ass on this metal chair again. You want a that brown one's chair? Worse. Do you want a brown chair? I don't know if the brown ones are better. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to sort of my podcast. My name is Vincent Herman, been the human sitting across the table from me. James Odell, Alpha Spectre. Guys, before we get started on this sort of our review, like our nerd news page, sort of my comics on Facebook, and follow sort of my podcast on Instagram. Check out Subject to Change Entertainment on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe to that channel on YouTube and SoundCloud. You're checking us out somewhere while well, here. Why not like, comment, and share? Sharing is the best way to let us know, or well, rather let people know that we're out there and let us know that you uh, dug our shit. And of course, all our personal social media is down in the description below. Hey, I'll that sounded it. super just recorded at this point. <laughs> you, you flipped a switch. And you're just like, <laughs> autonomous, here's you're all this, like, alright! I've, I've only done that so many times too, because we just did the rebranding. <laughs> just, I'm just, I know what to do at this point, but hey, Alpha Spectre, take a right, check it out. What am I drinking? I'm showing him my beer. You're drinking a smooth Coors Banquet. Yeah, just like Johnny Lawrence of the Karate Kai Dojo. Or <laughs> cover. <laughs> God, fuck that up. <laughs> Cobra Kai, don't you? Get it? Cobra Kai! Because we've talked about Cobra Kai like a million times. Are we just, are we going to bring Cobra Kai up in everything that we do for the rest of the year? Yep, especially our Deadpool 2 review, which is what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we went and saw Deadpool 2. If you don't know who Deadpool is, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, he's only on, like, every lunchbox and bag of chips there are out there. I mean, ten years ago, no one really gave much of a fuck about Deadpool. <laughs> now, everyone knows who Deadpool is. Children know who Deadpool is. I wouldn't Deadpool even go, as, like, ten years. I, I'd say, like, six, maybe seven years ago, nobody well, gave a shit about Deadpool. Back in, like, the, the mid to late 2000s. There, there were actually some really good, like grittier Deadpool. Well, comics yeah, there was a, there was that. kind of like an interest in the comics world, but uh, as far super, as him getting yeah. a big following, that Nothing didn't really worldwide. start happening until uh, he was I think no 2011. Yeah, he was no Spider Man. No, because <laughs> Spider Man's always been everywhere, always. Well, and, and speaking of Spider Man, Deadpool loves Spider Man. Yep, to yep. the point he wants to have a serious bromance with Spider Man. Hence, oh why God. we have so many issues of Spider Man <laughs> Deadpool. I really didn't think that'd make it past. I didn't years. either, but apparently it's doing well. <laughs> I, like I enjoyed the first couple of arcs, yeah. and then I, I that was one of the books I had to cut because I thought it was. I, end. I wouldn't have thought you to cut that because that was one of the ones you were really digging. Yeah, well, it, it kind of tanked for me for a little bit, and then I'm like, okay, I'm a few issues behind. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. You know, because I, I lost a little bit of interest after, I think, the second story arc. Okay. And I yeah. honestly didn't expect it to go any further. <laughs> and now it's in, like, the 30s, but it's about yeah. to end with their, oh, like... Are they finally ending it? I, as far as I know, they're ending a lot of the ongoing titles they have now with all of these new number one things <sighs> rolling around. God damn it, Marvel. But... You don't need a fresh start. You just need to write better stories. Well... <sighs> I mean, they have some really fucking good writers on their side. Like, Jason Aaron is becoming yeah, like one here's, of those... Yeah, but here's the thing. They they have good writers. Like, uh, Dan Slott's yeah. a, a good example. But there are some they keep where they are because they realize that work. And then there are some really great writers that they just keep shuffling around from book to book to book to book to try and find a place that they fit. And then everything gets boring and nobody's buying their books and so yeah. they do another restart every six fucking months and 
Well, and that's like, a problem. They speaking of Dan Slott, they took him off of Spider Man. Yeah. Which don't get me wrong. I'm excited for this next run of Spider-Man with Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley. It looks good. Ryan Otley is well, fucking and, awesome. And here's the thing. They took him off Spider-Man, but and just sitting right behind you is an advertisement for a book I'm now interested in. Tony he, Stark Iron Man? No, no, no. Look behind you, fucker. He's, he's going over to Iron Man, too. Yeah, but I don't... I, whatever. But I, I oh shit! Yeah, he's he's gonna be writing Fantastic Four. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, right. and so in August, I'm probably gonna be reading Fantastic Four for the first time ever. Not uh, same. Well, okay. Uh, I did read a four part arc of Ultimate Fantastic Four called Thor, uh, President Thor, <laughs> <laughs> because it was called President Thor. I had to, right? And it was actually pretty good. But uh, th- th- that's not why people are listening to this episode. They're not listening to us talk about Marvel's comic they're, book They're not problems. here to listen to us talk no. about comic books. They're here to listen to us talk about the Deadpool movies. Or, well, rather, one specific movie. And uh, to, to go back and talk to uh, talk further on your, uh, if you don't know who Deadpool is, this fucking ad campaign. Now, oh my god. The first one was good. The first one was great, but this one was everywhere and on everything. Like, there were ads on Snapchat Mm -hmm. for it. Like, you could not go somewhere without seeing an ad for Deadpool. Celine Dion music Uh, video. Fuck it. What magazine? Uh, There were a couple of magazines that did, like... a few of them. That did full-on, like... Deadpool takeovers. The, uh, quite a few different Fox movies are getting Deadpool covers, like Office Space, and uh, uh, and then there were like the mashup trailers. Yeah, like yeah, now, those were great. Well, wait a minute, were those official like Fox advertisement or were those just fan? I'm not sure, but the one I saw... Those are probably fan-made, because otherwise I, I feel like I, they would have come up in my news feed and shit. Cause I, one I, of them, one of them came up in mine, <laughs> and it was a Ryan Reynolds, Julia Roberts movie that, like, they just took Deadpool clips and clips of Julia Roberts from the movie, and, like, it meshed so perfectly. I th- I'm, I'm thinking this is maybe a fan-made thing, well, but I'm thing still is, glad it happened. Uh, like a lot of it, a lot of the dialogue was fresh. So if it was, if it was fan made, yeah. they somehow got Ryan Reynolds on board to do some of this stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so the ad campaign has been awesome. So you obviously know what we're talking about. Otherwise, why would you have clicked on this thing? I don't know. We're just talking at this point. So while we're talking, let's go ahead and do our spoiler-free version of our Deadpool review. And then we'll get into spoilers. Don't worry. There will be a little, hey, get the fuck out of here. We're about to do spoilers. So if you listen past that point, it's your goddamn fault. You will have been warned. No. Nobody. You cannot come to us and yell at us for spoilers. We will put you on blast. We will use the sound clip. I'm talking to you, Greg. Talking to you, Greg. I don't know who Greg is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think we have a Greg who comments or likes on the page. <laughs> so, but this time, there will be. This time, there's a Greg. Because there's going to be a hashtag. Looking at you, Greg. <laughs> Looking at you, Greg. Oh, that's our next t-shirt, if we ever have t-shirts. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start out. Um, let's talk about the story. Uh, how well-structured was the story? Honestly, I feel like it was pretty consistent throughout. Mm-hmm. Real quick, before we get into this, the trailers really give us no no yeah. idea right, what the actual right, story is. We can talk about is. trailers first. Yeah, well, the yeah, no. Well, the trailers the, gave us enough to know that trailers, Cable is after the kid. Cable's after the that. kid. Deadpool's protecting the kid. Yeah. That's what we get from the trailers. That's really about all we get story-wise. And X-Force is in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh they're they're here and there which you'll find out later. 
the the trailers are a little misleading as far as the story goes because there's a lot more depth to the story and plot of this movie <laughs> than just cables after a kid, Deadpool's protecting the kid. Which, well, there are also <laughs> things in that trailer that are just flat out not in the movie, and we'll get into <laughs> that more later. So, uh, <laughs> here's one thing. I don't feel like we found out enough about who Cable is, but we do know plenty about his motivations. So it was well structured in the way that it was like, here's why Deadpool is after these people. Here is why Cable is after this kid. Here is why uh, the people who are behind all this have their motivations and stuff. So I feel like as far as like story, especially for a character like Deadpool, who seriously could have just slipped on a copy of us weekly and then decided that they're an enemy. (laughs) Right. Uh, Well, it was pretty well structured yeah, for, for the like, character we're talking about. Completely like, overall, yeah. I feel like the movie was well structured. Yeah. The 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 story that everyone knows that they've seen without seeing the movie is fully there. You know, Deadpool is trying to save and protect this kid from cable mm-hmm. and that is a very common Well and and now I feel like this is a good Good point for us to get into characters, because I, th- I feel like one of the things you were getting to there was that this in this movie, they do a really good job of fleshing out the humanity in Deadpool and, and his uh, em- like they, they make you empathetic to Deadpool. And then uh, Cable is also a good example of that. Well, I, I don't feel like they went as deep into who cable uh, again who cable is and like uh, you know his emotional state as they did with Deadpool they did a good job of fleshing him out it's yeah. like kind of a hardened I- i'm going to say war battled type of character yeah i got that uh, uh, that because you know if you do know anything about cable he is you know kind of a, a futuristic so he's a soldier from the future. Whoa, spoilers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cable's been an established character since the 90s. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> so he he is a soldier from the future. Uh, you, you find out his motivation, why he's doing what he's doing, and you, you can empathize with him mm-hmm. why he's doing what he's doing. What about uh, Domino? What did you think of Domino? I really actually... I enjoyed Domino. Yeah. She, she added... She's very fun. She yeah. She's too apathetic, though. I, I don't... Well, maybe well, not so uh, aloof. She was too yes. aloof. Yes. And, and the thing is, there was just so, like, no fucks with her. Because... And even in the trailer, she's like, I'm lucky. Yeah, He's, that's her superpower. Luck's not a superpower. Yeah. Yeah, it is. so they have that back and forth, but it just, as the movie goes on, that's all it is for her. There's the one moment when they're in the truck, and we'll, we'll go in deeper into that, but there is a truck in the trailer, so I feel like I can say yeah. that. Uh, when they're in the truck where she does, she, she kind of turns into a skid of some sort, and she seems somewhat concerned, like, well, here we go, alright, let's do this, like... Oh, the, but it's I, like I the, the tiniest bit of like. There's a little bit of doubt. How far does out. yeah? How far does my luck go? But he, after that, it's just it's gone. She just does shit. She's fine because she knows she's gonna be all right. And she added almost. I don't want to say a breath of fresh air because the movie he pretty much has you smiling and in a sense of enjoyment from just about start to finish. You know what, though? Here's the thing. I, I feel like, and and we experienced this in the theater, people go into this movie expecting a comedy, and they want to laugh at everything. Yeah. People don't expect to be taken on a roller coaster, and this movie mm-hmm. was kind of a roller oh, coaster. Yeah, and and exactly. that's where we're talking about the empathy of Deadpool here, because there's a lot of actual character building for that character. And there were people in the theater with us laughing at parts that absolutely were not meant to be laughed at. Right. Just because they were... 
all of a sudden we went from a good time to a really serious time and I feel felt like those people were uncomfortable and are, didn't know what to do. Are you talking about the people that were behind us? Well, there were people behind us. And probably, there were people all through the theater. You did it a few times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... I, I know I did, but... Okay, real quick. Going to our experience of the movie real quick, those people behind me were pissing me off. Really? I like, barely noticed them. Because it I mean, was I get. Those, I, I don't know about you, but I I like to watch a movie. I'm not concerned with the people around. Us. Okay, listen, to shit stain. These people <laughs> behind <laughs> us were going. <laughs> <laughs> no and way! Like uh, someone cable called someone a cunt, and they're like a <laughs> cunt. So like it had to have been a kid. Like it had to have been a kid. <laughs> no. Yes, like that was exactly what happened after that line in the movie. That's amazing. And I'm just like, and I didn't it's notice so these people until about halfway through the movie. And yeah. then I couldn't stop hearing them behind us because someone just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they were laughing. I just wanted to reach around and say, shut the fuck up. <laughs> It was... You know what? It's equivalent exchange, because the last time we went to the movies up there together was for Star Wars, right? Black Panther. No, no, no. It was Star Wars. No, we went to Black Panther. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. Right. Yeah. uh, Well, I was going to say, Star Wars, I was standing in front of people looking at the title crawl, because I went to go use the bathroom during the trailers, and I got in just for the title crawl. As soon as the title crawl hit, I was in. Um... So, yeah. Uh, That's (laughs) not going anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. So, uh, they all added their own unique element. Colossus, I... Hmm. I enjoyed. They've turned... I've enjoyed... Okay, and this is another thing in these Deadpool films. You're not getting your comic book characters. Deadpool is spot on. Oh, yeah. Domino is a good example here. Domino is not like Domino from the comics. No, no. Domino is a a woman you do not want to fuck with in the comic books. But at the same time, Colossus is a very serious character in the comic books as well. Yeah. And nope, not here. Oh my God. He is such a, a pivot point for comedy. Like he just sets him up and And Deadpool knocks him out. I was going to say, but a lot of it is, it's completely unintentional by Colossus. Well, no, that's the thing. He's the straight man and Deadpool is the goofball. It's a classic comedy trope. Yeah. They would make a great Laurel and Hardy type team. Uh, a, a great Yanny and Hardy team? Uh, don't. We're not doing that here. Don't. There's a way better Captain America meme going around <laughs> right now, and I want to focus on that. <laughs> so, no one told you life was going to be this way. Love them, man. I love it. Because, one, I, I only saw Spider-Man Homecoming once in theaters, and I have totally forgot about the detention part. Right. And now uh, this has totally brought it back for me, and I really want time to watch it, but I'm doing this podcast and I'm working, so all you sons of bitches are stealing my time. But we still love you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, yes. Uh, no. Th- and then... But then you also kind of see that turn later in the movie for yeah. Colossus, where he he comes to kind of a realization because of Deadpool, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit yeah. more here. In no, a little bit. I, and I will say this: not so much that he starts killing people. No, 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 no he no. still stays true to that code. But yeah, uh, we'll, I, I get we'll what you mean. That there. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, there, there's. A couple more villains that pop up in this movie. That you would expect, yeah. Uh, uh, and the villains, that is... that I, I would say that's maybe the worst thing about this movie. They are not fleshed out at all. Yeah. They are bad guys to be bad guys to be killed. We, like, And in the first movie, uh, Francis. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the other name that he has. Ajax. Ajax, yes. Uh, Francis Ajax. He seemed, like, while we don't get much of his backstory or anything, he seemed fleshed out enough as a, right. look, this is an evil dude. The other guys are just like, here's, like, three minutes of why maybe these guys are evil, and then we're just going to kill him at the Here's end. a flashback. Here's why they don't like him. Yeah. 
Now you guys don't like him. Cool! And one of the villains doesn't necessarily need to be fleshed out. We'll get more into that in yeah. spoilers. Which I feel is like is becoming the catchphrase. I of think this at this point... Uh, we'll... No, we're not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're not ready yet. But uh, yeah, no, the, I don't feel like the villains were fleshed out well enough. I didn't... And like you said, like one of them doesn't really need to be... Yeah. One, like, there's one kind of set. And the one uh, that didn't need to be was the one I cared about, or uh, the one that I I enjoyed more. Yeah. Because I already know he doesn't need to be. But the others might as well have just been the armed he- henchmen. I gave that little of a shit. Yeah, and essentially that that's all they ended up being was... Death Cannon fodder. fodder. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, these guys were in this movie to make you not like them so that... Well, I didn't know. even get a chance to not like them. Because it wasn't clear what they were doing until towards the end. Like Actually, kind like of... the last 20, 25 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Uh, it was alluded mm. to, and you had the obvious stuff, that uh, there was abuse involved. Of minors, I don't feel like that gives away anything. No, no. Uh, th- there was abuse of minors, which is enough reason to want these guys to die. Absolutely. But then you get kind of a broader spectrum later on. Okay, so overall, what did you think of the movie? Honestly, overall, I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first one. Okay. Uh, there, there were some lulls during the movie that could have been, I feel like, could have been prevented. Um, like some things dragged out a little too much, uh, or played up or played on a little m- longer than they should have been. Yeah, some jokes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but like all in all, you know, I, and you were right beside me. I I was laughing and smiling from pretty much start to finish. Uh, like you said, it had its ups and downs. Like as far as emotions go, uh, made you really feel for some of the characters. That made you almost piss yourself laughing at different scenarios. Uh, Some of which maybe you shouldn't have laughed at, but you did. (laughs) But either way, I would probably give it seven, five, eight. Honestly, Mm. well, (sighs) okay. Well, it's, it's really hard for me to go below a, a, like a five on any movie. So I guess, I guess my scale would like three and a half out of five, three and a half, you haven't seen Manos Hands of Fate yet. I give that a solid 1.2. You haven't seen it. Watch it. Before you do. <laughs> She'll realize it's a point seven. <laughs> uh, anyways. No, I almost uh, thought you said poinsettia, and I'm like, what do Christmas flowers have to do with anything? <laughs> no, um... And, and I don't mean this as an insult, but I think you're more of a mark for this type of stuff than I am. Uh, I, I definitely break it down a little bit more. I take I take certain parts more seriously. Like we were saying, you were laughing at some of those parts that were meant to be meaningful character growing yeah. moments. Me personally, I, I definitely don't think this was better than the first one, or or even equal. It was fun. There was a lot of a lot of great stuff. It's awesome seeing Cable on screen, yeah. and uh, honestly, I think uh, aside from Deadpool, uh, Cable is probably the most comic accurate character I've seen in a Fox X Men outside of his height. Uh, yeah, yeah, outside of his height, <laughs> yeah, which, which they do not let us forget. <laughs> uh, the amount of jokes they crack just about yeah. his height. No, but yeah, Cable was probably my favorite. Uh, just looking at it from a comic fan, fan point, <laughs> favorite part of the movie. Uh, but I would... Okay, if we're working on a scale from 1 to 10, I would probably give this like a 6.5, maybe 7. Maybe 7. Yeah, I have to work hard for that 7. As I can see me putting Deadpool on at any time. Deadpool 2? I don't know. Like... Every now and again, maybe after like a while, I haven't seen it in a while, and I'm remembering some funny parts, and then I put it in, and I go, oh, this is why I haven't watched it in so long. And that's another one of those things. I I feel like there were also scenes in the movie that were set up for a non-rated version. 
Maybe. Like I, I doubt it though because they they live off of the fact that they were R rated and all those laurels. How successful it was as an R rated film, I seriously well, doubt that they were doing that. There, there's one part in particular, like one scene in particular, <laughs> that I feel was was made for a non rated part. And uh, I think that is a really good segue into spoilers. But before we get into that, uh, just today, as of recording this, I came up with the idea that we would maybe start doing some weekly polls on the Subject to Change Entertainment Facebook page, uh, which you should go over and like after this episode. But today I posted the poll of what do you like better? Do you like Deadpool or Deadpool 2? And right now... And keep in mind, this still has six days to go and a lot of sharing, which I intend to do. Yeah. But uh, it has 22 votes with 64% coming out on the side of Deadpool 2 compared to the 36% on Deadpool 1. Which I find very interesting for a movie yeah. that, like, again, as of recording this, technically just came out yesterday. Yeah. So... That's a little weird, but all right. So it looks like Deadpool two has the popular vote, and I think uh, I think we'll cover these polls on the regular episodes as well. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll do a little segment or well, something. I, I think as of right now, some of that can probably just be contributed to the newness of Deadpool two. Yeah, and you know it's it's a fresh dose of Deadpool, and the new segment can be contributed to the freshness of this new idea that we had because we're really trying to figure out what to do with the subject to change entertainment pages and stuff because obviously we're gonna post any podcasts or videos or whatever we do there, but uh, mm-hmm. we, we want to be engaging as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into spoilers. So this is your spoiler warning. Ladies and gentlemen, you are entering the spoiler zone. Anything from here on out is considered a spoiler. You have been warned. <laughs> it's spoilers! Okay, I'm going to... I'm actually going to take a clip of what you just did without my bullshit addition, because that did not work like how I thought it would. And I'm probably going to layer that on every time. Uh, so now you and Travis have a layer in segment <laughs> thing. Okay, so spoilers. Do you want uh, do you want to do it the same structure we just did? Not spoilers or uh, uh, do you honestly, just, do you just let's just kind of go like film start to end. Film start to end. Not yeah. you know not minute two by hours. Minute. <laughs> no minute by minute. All let's right, do it. So as soon as the film opens, we see Deadpool in a no, trap. No, no. But. <laughs> okay, that that is not a bad place to start, though, because wh- uh, another th- problem I had with this movie was a lot of repetitive jokes. Uh, a lot of stuff, and you could argue that maybe they knew that they were doing that. Like, I think early into the film, there's a moment where, or actually, it's like the first scene of the film where Deadpool's listening to I'm All Out of Love, and I leaned into you and said... Maybe this is a Van Wilder reference. <laughs> oh, because yeah, yeah. There is a moment in Van Wilder when him and Tara Reid break up, or or she blows him off or whatever, and he's sitting there listening to I'm All Out of Love, and he ex- has to explain who they are and why he's listening to it to this college chick. It's really funny. Watch Van Wilder. But <laughs> this is not a Van Wilder review. Just watch Van Wilder. But, so I was like, because it wasn't super obvious, but I was like, maybe this is why. Uh, I doubt it, but I feel like they did it on accident. They did it via bad writing, which they say bad writing at well, least three times they, during they the movie. They say they they use the phrase "that's just lazy writing." Well, a, rather, a few different times they use that phrase to uh, to explain their use of uh, like typical certain pivot things. Po- yeah, t- uh, pivotal plot points and stuff. Yeah, just like. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's just lazy writing. Yeah, so that was one thing that bothered me was uh, another reason it goes farther down the scale for me was overused jokes. And the intro, uh, to to bring it back to the reason I started talking about this, <laughs> the intro is the first time I get this. And that's not a good thing. Like, when you're only, like, maybe two, three minutes into the movie and you're already rolling your eyes, that's not a good thing for me. Um, and which they, part made you roll your eyes? It was the, um, now I did appreciate all the Bond references, but the opening 
montage uh, with the 20th Century Fox Presents starring. And, oh, like well, from the, the first there, film. there was a scene before that, though. Yeah. Well, no, and, and it was motivated differently. I'll give yeah. you that. Because the scene before that, uh, we see Deadpool kill himself, and then we see why he killed himself. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, we get to see Vanessa die. Uh, spoiler alert. Well, no, we're in spoilers. <laughs> they already knew. Fuck. There's my phone. <laughs> Fuck him. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. we, we see her die... Like, well, as, like, the, the pr- like... No, we see him kill himself, and then he's like, why am I doing this? Let's rewind six weeks. And then we see a whole then, bunch like, of shit. That whole spiel yeah. goes on, and... Because he's started taking on hits. He's become a hitman, an basically. international assassin. Which is a great montage. I, yeah. I love like, that. that whole... <laughs> and... Is that to the Celine Dion song, too? I feel like I that was done to been. the Celine Dion song. Uh, but, like, there was one part... One of my favorites of that opening sequence was that guy's really on fire. That's not CGI, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah, and I really hope that's true. Right? But uh, yeah, and then eventually uh, that catches up with him. He, him and Vanessa decide they're going to have a kid finally, and they have this fun back and forth. Um, Connor was so I I read something today. Connor was one of the names, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, and, and this isn't confirmed, but one of the kids that, oh, Make-A-Wish kids that Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds yeah, had visited yeah, yeah. was named Connor. And so I feel like maybe that was a nod towards him I think because so, he because has since passed. Like, Marvel, Marvel's good about doing stuff like that. Uh, well, because... well, yeah, but this is, this is more Fox Studios than it is Marvel. Right. Yeah. But like, uh, even in, in comics, they pull that kind of stuff in. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like that was the thing. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they decide they're going to have a kid, blah, blah, blah. It's the next day. Hitmen show up to Wade's house, and uh, she ends up getting shot and dying. And then that's what brings us into this opening sequence, where we get the joke of, like, uh, like 20th Century Fox presents, wait, did you really just kill her? And then it just keeps going like that. Like, wow, and I'm totally... Every single, like, yeah. credit segment. Whereas, like, the, the first movie was, like, uh, directed by some pretentious ass hat And shit like that, yeah. I think, uh, like, so I felt like, like the, you know... And, produced by the real villains or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. It, which, it was... Yeah, you, know, you, you can you written can still, by the real villains. Yeah, because that was the one yeah. I re- definitely remember. So, like yeah. for the first few, you can you can still appreciate that reused humor, but that opening but credit goes section on, yeah. took forever. After, I'll give you that. After a minute, after a minute, I just stopped paying attention to the words that were on the screen, and I just watched the the See, intro. That's and that's where I, where I caught doing. all the 007 references yeah. and stuff, which, which well, is very obvious from the first one because it's the. The, uh, the silencer. I think the the view. one that yeah. I liked the most was just the cream cheese spreader that made the like <laughs> uh, the the telescoping. Yeah, uh, the, I I think that's supposed to be a si- like from the view of a silencer. Yeah, yeah. But it was the cream cheese spreader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like uh, some of the visuals in that were were in the opening sequence were really good. Yeah, it was fun. But it's one of those you had to choose between. Reading the funny credits or mm-hmm. watching what was going on, so eh. <laughs> yeah, they they could have cut that about halfway through. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and talk about cable real quick. Let's talk about what what cable was all about in this thing. Well, before we talk about cable, do we kind of want to go in a little bit to why cable shows up? Well, that would be. Why we would talk about Cable, because otherwise we've already talked about Cable. <laughs> so, The Kid. Okay, oh yeah, fine, let's talk about well, The Kid first. The, yeah. the Kid. Wade, Deadpool, kill, tries to kill himself to reunite with Vanessa. Doesn't work, because mm-hmm. as, as we all know, Deadpool just regenerates. Yeah. Well, Colossus has pieced him back together, taken him to the X-Mansion, 
and Deadpool's trying to figure out why he needs to reunite with Vanessa. And it, it comes down to Deadpool joining the X-Men and being a trainee. Yeah. Which he, he no one the, lets him forget. The half jersey and everything, yeah. And I loved that jersey. Like, yeah. that whole look that was, fun. was amusing. So, there, the first thing, the, his first mission, this kid outside of a, a mutant orphanage was blowing shit up. And... Which does have some sort of ties to the comics. I can't remember the name of the orphanage, uh, yeah. what the tie is, um, but I did read something today that orphanage does tie into the Essex? comics. Essex? I think it was uh, uh, yeah, Essex Yeah, 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 Essex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's funny is the only reason I remember that is there's a, a comic called Essex County by Jeff Lemire that I really <laughs> want to read. <laughs> and it made me think of that. So somehow that has burned it into my memory. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, no, Deadpool does go and, and tries to stop this kid who's losing control and stuff. Uh, what does he call himself? What is uh, his name? Uh, Fire Hands or Fire Fist? Hands? Fire Fist. Fire Fist, yes. Fire Fist. Fire Fist. And, of course, the first thing, right off the bat, as soon as he says that, Deadpool just gives him shit. Yeah. So the kid is, like, shooting fire at Negasonic. No, well, he's shooting fire at Deadpool, and he gets <laughs> ducking. <laughs> And it blows Negasonic back. Eventually it does it again. Blows uh, Colossus Colossus back. Which, you know, props to the kid. Like, his powers are strong for this ridiculously fat kid. Yeah. And I even made the comment. I'm like, he's a little unnecessarily (laughs) fat. He is. And, he's you know, he's this, very this, rotund. This may be a little shitty for me to say, but I mean, this kid's yeah, like... Because you're not a very slim person yourself. I'm not. Like, like yeah. I'm about 80 pounds overweight myself, but I'm also a 30-year-old man who consumes beer fa- fairly regularly. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like a 13, 14-year-old kid who's almost my size. Yeah. So... But Deadpool's trying to play the hero here. He's trying to do things the right way. He's talking to the kid, and he's trying to calm him down. He's doing a good job up to a point, and then he starts looking over at the administration, and uh, and one of the, I, I think, is the most creepiest in, uh, okay. what, what would you call them? Uh, orderly. Yeah, yeah. The creepiest okay. orderly ever. That yeah. guy, I could have sworn, that guy has to be a, had to be a mutant. I don't think so. Because he almost looked like Toad. If he was, they would have shown something. uh, Yeah. Because he just looked too alienistic to be human. Yeah. And uh, Deadpool's doing all right, though, and then he kills that guy. Well, he's talking to the kid and he gets the sense that he's been abused. And this is what they're alluding to. He sees the the burn mark on his He sees the burn marks and stuff. He sees the way that the kid is acting. Yeah. Yeah. After he asks him they're hurting you. And just out of nowhere, Deadpool just pulls his gun and shoots the guy. Because you think that he's trying to do things the right way. The Colossus way. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, no. It just, in a moment, he just kills the dude. And tries to kill the other guys until Colossus comes over and uh, restrains him. And then him and the kid get, end up getting locked down at the icebox, yeah. which is another reference to the comics. But this is a lot more obscure. You, have you ever heard of the icebox before? I've heard of have it. Have you? Uh, For real? I have heard I've of it. I've never heard of it before. Uh, but I've never like read anything of the icebox, yeah. but I have heard that name. Yeah, it, it's a thing, but it's a rarely used thing in Marvel yeah. Comics. Uh, so they get locked up at the icebox, which I felt was really interesting because they took away Deadpool's powers, which reminds you that the cancer is there. Yeah. Which I had kind of forgot. And well, I know it's a I big thing too. about Deadpool in the comics or the movies, but I had kind of forgotten about it until they... But the uh, till he talks about it in the yeah. cell, yeah. Well, and that's well, no. It was even... the moment he started throwing up. I was like, and you said it first. Yeah, yeah. He has cancer. Yeah, so, well, yeah. Uh, that was my impression. As, you. as oh, the oh, he has cancer. <laughs> that's exactly how you said it right there in the theater the, when I they're said, walking into the icebox. Shut, the, shut the fuck up! I'm talking. Now. I moved over I'm a seat talking. and I stopped talking to you. The rest you of couldn't this. move over a seat because there was someone there. No, there you wouldn't want to. No, Four you, seats now. you wouldn't, wouldn't have wanted to sit next to them. <laughs> All right. Was, yeah, what were you saying? Uh, <laughs> well, as they were walking into the icebox, I, I, I lean over and I'm like, 
okay, he can't, he doesn't regenerate, but he's still an expert combatant. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, then, yeah. like, he gets to the scene in their cell, he's peeing, and it's like, oh, yeah, he has cancer. Yeah. Because of everything else, it's easy to forget that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, without his powers, Deadpool's gonna die. Yeah. Like, just straight out. And now that I'm thinking of it, because this prison is where we first see, or not first see, but uh, where Deadpool first interacts with Cable. Because Cable has shown up to kill this kid. And now that I'm thinking about it, the way that they reveal Cable's family dying, which is his whole motivations in this film, yeah. could have been played out earlier in the film. That scene where that we... Could have, yeah, that yeah, could have been like a separate occurrence. Because we're abruptly, well before the icebox, we're abruptly thrown back into the future, I get thrown forward into the future. <laughs> uh, and Cable is over top of these charred bodies, and he picks up the teddy bear, and it's really obvious what happened. Yeah. So there's really no mystery to build from that. But where they could have built from mystery was they could have shown the scene where his family dies, which they show later. The, right. Them having dinner, and the, the mom and the daughter are playing or something like that. And then someone breaks in, and they torch the whole place, they kill him. And that could have built mystery for, like, the, yeah. oh, shit, this kid is that dude. And which is eventually what they come to the realization yeah. of in the film. But it's, you know, it, it's just too obvious from the beginning. So why not try and build that mystery from an earlier point? Save your time later in the third yeah. act. Because that's when they drop it on us, is the third act. Yeah, you know? Like, Cable drops in, in the middle of nowhere... Steals a truck from a couple of, of rednecks, one of which we didn't even realize was yeah. Alan Tudyk. Yeah, we were sitting there watching the credits, and, and my eyes immediately went to Alan Tudyk. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, what? Redneck number one? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, uh, wow, what were they talking about, too? Because it was like really modern oh, age. Yeah. You I don't even remember. Rednecks. Uh, yeah, shit. God, and I brought a notebook to take notes, and but I started flipping through it, and I noticed every page was already well, filled. <laughs> the the funny thing is, the thing I noticed about that scene was, and it was Alan Alan Tudyk's character, yeah, had an obviously fake beer gut. beer gut. It had to be beer gut, yeah. And it it was one of those like it really just looked like he had a pillow under his shirt. <laughs> yeah. It was it was a really funny scene because it, it was Cable just gets into their truck and like, well, or no he, he throws up, his what gun. What year is it? <laughs> throws his gun into the truck. What year is it? What do you mean? What and like they kind of berate him a little bit and then just he he pulls his fanny pack around, gets this little thing out, stuns them both, and steals, <laughs> steals their steals their beer steals in their truck. The truck. Yeah. Oh, which he's. Putting that beer to use later, too, which yeah. I found very entertaining because I'm a Budweiser man myself. And that's the beer and their obvious uh, product placement. But, uh. So, and, and another scene that we see with Cable that's actually somewhat important is he has all of his weaponry laid out on, like, this hotel bed or wherever Ooh, he's yeah, at. Oh, yeah, that was really cool. And, like, you, you see his, his cybernetics come into effect, and it's like... These certain pieces go into repair mode. Yeah. And he basically takes... Well, it's this this hologram display that's kind of up in front of him where he, he's bringing up these weapons and kind of like picking and choosing parts and yeah. fine-tuning so and upgrading. Any and... Anyone who knows who Cable is knows that he has just ridiculously big, obnoxious guns. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just kind of one of his shticks, so yeah. to speak. And, of course, he just starts picking up pieces and putting this gun together that's almost as tall as he is. <laughs> I and, wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, no, because when it was on his, like, when it goes on his back, you see the uh, the butt of it, like, almost up to the top yeah. of his head. And it's down to at least his knees. Another great thing about Cable that uh, we didn't learn about in this film, but if you know him from the comics, is that the cybernetics of his arm, that's a disease. Yeah. That's a degenerative it's disease. It's technovirus. Technovirus, is what yes. it is. And you, especially when you see him from behind, you can see where it's obviously torn skin. Yeah. And uh, and it's starting to work its way out, but they never talk about it. But it, mm-hmm. that was a really nice touch, the way that they 
Yeah. Because they could have just gave him a metal arm. Like, mm-hmm. Winter Soldier. Which, trust me, they don't pass up that joke. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, we've talked about Cable. We've talked about his motivations and stuff. Let's, uh, uh, what do you want to talk about next? Oh, that's you know lot. what? Yeah. You know what? Let's, uh, let's talk about their solution to Cable. Let, let's talk about okay. the X-Force. Let's talk about the X-Force. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This, <laughs> this, this was built... Like, this was a, a big thing coming yeah. into this movie. You know, Deadpool builds the X-Force. Yeah. He interviews these people, makes a team. Pretty good scene. We get uh, Shatterstar. We get... Uh, who was Terry Crews again? Bedlam. Bedlam, yeah. We uh, get Bedlam. Domino. Domino. Uh, we get Peter. We get... Sugar Bear. That, Sugar Bear That himself. scene. That scene oh. when, when he's like, what are your powers? I, I don't have any. I just saw the ad, thought it looked like fun. Here I am. And he's like, you're in. And Dopinder has been <laughs> yeah, this all whole, over Deadpool. This whole movie, he's been saying stuff like, uh, I want to I, I bathe be, in the blood of our enemies and shit like, like that. The first, the first conversation that they have, Dopinder has decided he wants to be a contract yeah, killer. Yeah. So... He's moving like crates or something in the background. He is. Uh, what, what's Peter's his name? Weasel. Weasel. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Something like that. T.J. Miller's character. Yeah. Which dude? And, fuck that guy. We're not gonna talk very deep on it, but fuck that guy. It, All right, back to the movie. <laughs> he, uh, Dopinder is basically his work bitch, mm-hmm. and he's moving some crates in the room. And when Peter is in there for his interview, he's like. Uh, I don't have any powers. I just thought it looked like fun trying to get out of the house a little bit more. Yeah, and that was like you're in. The well, in the background. You're Son in. of a bitch! <laughs> just like screams, so throws great. the crates down. Uh, but Dupinder eventually gets him. Yes, towards the end. Which, yeah. Well, uh, well, we yeah. have well, to bring. That I, up. I hope we get remember to get back to that because <laughs> uh, we're kind like, of like we have the, uh, the Vanisher. The Vanisher, yes. Now, uh, this is definitely something I wanted to bring up. People were making a big deal out of the parachute scene from the yeah, trailers yeah. because apparently there, the theory was that they had scrubbed a guy from the parachute scene but forgot to scrub the parachute itself because there was an empty parachute. It turns out that it was the Vanisher, which is an actual character from the comic books yeah. and stuff. Uh, and this leads to a great... Great reveal, which we're going to get to in a moment. So, but we had the Vanisher. Uh, uh, do we have anyone else? Uh, we had uh, the guy who the vomits acid. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, yes. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. That, yeah. And, and it's like, okay, for for some unknown reason to even me, pronouncing certain German words has come <laughs> naturally to me. And Even though you, you just got Zeitgeist wrong well, just a moment ago. <laughs> But that that, too. that combination, yeah. uh, like that formation of that word, is zeitgeist. Nope. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, <laughs> so he he can what, what was it? Vomit acid. Yeah, he vomits acid. That's his whole thing, and I I believe that rounds out the X Force. Yeah. Yeah. He and what? Uh, the X Force lasts about ten minutes. Uh. 10, Let's 15 see. minutes. I, I would say about 10, 15 minutes. Because it goes in order like this. Uh, he puts together the team. They're in the helicopter. The, uh, yeah, they're, they're in like this big yeah. military stuff. Puts together the team. They're in the military uh, type helicopter. Deadpool's psyching them all up and stuff, giving, the, giving them the business and whatnot. They repel. It's the big parachute scene. But the thing that's been brought up, and even before he forms the X Force, I feel like someone said something about heavy winds. Yeah, yeah. Big, uh, Cable has kidnapped a... uh, Weasel, and is like starting this list of all of the things that he's gonna do to him to get information. He's like, "You don't even have to start with number one. Here's where they're gonna be. Here's what's gonna happen." Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and... Oh my god! Okay, again, <laughs> fuck T.J. Miller. But this was such a good scene. It was. Because <laughs> he's like, because uh, he starts to say something like, like you'll the, never the get it out of me. It's like, fuck you. And then, I, uh, what, Cable pulls something out? He just pulls something out of it. He's like, yeah, they're, they're going to be alone this <laughs> round. He immediately this time. starts, he's 
Like, and like at the end, he's like, and if you think about going after them, there's a wind advisory in effect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I love it because later that joke comes back around because uh, later he's telling Deadpool, he's like, yeah, he captured me. And you think he's going to say something like, and I didn't give him anything. But he's like, and I gave him everything immediately. <laughs> he's just like, he just unapologetically just gives away the fact that he gave away everything right away. Yeah. <laughs> so, and again, fuck T.J. Miller. But so that was really funny. There was a wind advisor in effect. Yes. And they're parachuting down from this. Uh, they all, they pull their chutes. And you you think that they're they're gonna land they're gonna go after right, this right. because the reason that they're parachuting down is they're not going after Cable they're going after this convoy that's transporting the boy yeah because they know that Cable is gonna go after that right and the entire time that they're planning this and the entire time because there is a planning scene too yeah it, there's the hiring crayon scene, the planning scene yeah he draws an old crayon it's amazing. Uh, it's like if everything goes according to plan, there won't be a step three. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, fa- no. It's called phase three, isn't it? Yeah, they do them in phases. I think <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another little dig at the MCU there. Was there so, plenty of digs oh, in DC oh and MCU? Oh my god, the uh, when when they first had their fight in the prison, and Cable's like, so, "Who are you? I'm, I'm Batman." Batman. <laughs> yes, like, uh, but anyway. I, I think we both kind of lost it at that. Yeah, point. I I couldn't hold it. Uh, but yeah, so so they're and they're in the planning stage and they bring up the wind advisory. They're in the helicopter and twice they bring up the wind advisory. I feel like it happens twice. In there. Yeah, yeah, and of course, like in in the helicopter, everyone's like kind of preparing, and Peter, he. <laughs> Like, everyone's, like, loading their gun or, like, checking something. Peter just squirts a big thing of sunscreen in his hands. Put it on. It's like, I don't know about this cable fella, but I'm sure melanoma has killed more people than he has. <laughs> yes, I fucking love Peter. So, He's and then, the of precious course, sugar bear. <laughs> a, few, a few minutes into that scene, uh, he he says something about like never having parachute or like being nervous yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And Deadpool is well, screaming at him. He's like, "I never let anything to happen to you. You're my favorite. <laughs> You're my favorite sugar bear." <laughs> That's the sugar first bear. time I've I'm just yelling for bear. Yeah. for dramatic effect or uh, like something. And then they they jump. So let's do this in order. In order. In order because okay. the wind advisory. Does come it, into a play. It, it plays a very <laughs> so, big factor in what's about to happen. So we here bad. we have the X Factor, X Force, or the X Force. They are stupid son of a bitch. Well, you know, X Factor number one I'm had about even, five I'm billion not copies. Editing it out, I'm gonna let it all be out there, and everyone's gonna call you just a fucking dumb piece of shit. Well, you're the one still recording with me. So what yeah, does that say well, about you? Obviously, there's no one else here. <laughs> so there's there's something going on there. So the whole X-Force is, is parachuting down. And the first one to make it towards the ground is Bedlam. Bedlam, yeah. And he comes to the ground. He's, he's gaining on the... Like, you think he's going to get there because he's gaining on the truck transport. Yeah. Yeah. So a- as he nears the ground, he gets hit by a bus. Yep. Like, goes straight through the windshield, hit by a bus. Just oh, damn near cut in half, yeah. the way he looked through that window. And, and so uh, he's the first to go. <laughs> and so that that's one of those moments that as soon as that happens, like, the everyone's just laughing. So now we progress. And I think yeah. the second one was... Was it, was it Vanisher it, no, or was it... it was Shatterstar. Shatterstar, Shatterstar yes. is about to land on the rooftop of a building. Right. That... Just so happens to have a helicopter preparing. Well, he for got takeoff. carried over there by the wind too. That's yeah. not where he was supposed like, to be. Yeah. You know, again, but he's, this he's, wind advisory yeah. has affected everything. But he's getting carried over there, and there's a helicopter. And I think as soon as I saw that helicopter after Bedlam, I knew and, what was about. I yeah. was like, "Oh no, oh god!" And he gets. Chopped up by this, these helicopter blades. And it's blades. like what this greenish, pinkish, green blood because like, Shatterstar is an alien if from you didn't know. Mojo World. From Mojo World, yes. And that's a whole thing. I could talk a lot about Mojo World because <laughs> it is actually really interesting. Yeah. But uh, so, and his hair 
flops down on the windshield. Oh my the god, yes, his hair flops down. And just kind of like windshield. slides down a little oh, bit. Oh no. So now we're down Bedlam and Shatterstar. Yeah, and then the next is the Vanisher. And the next one, you, you see the Vanisher. You yeah. see the parachute. You're seeing this empty parachute coming down. Traveling down. And it smacks right into a power line. Big cameo in, in the film because... You start seeing him come back into focus, and it's none other than goddamn Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt. Brad is the Vanisher. Pitt. Wow! And out of nowhere, no one saw that coming. <laughs> so, yeah. so now we have Bedlam almost in half on, on the front of a bus. Shatterstar, Shatterstar is just up blended. Goo. We have Vanisher, who's being fried to a crisp on these power lines. Next down comes Zeitgeist. Yep. Straight into a fucking wood chipper. In a cul-de-sac, too. Like, far removed from where they're supposed to be, Wait, wait, apparently. wait. No, no, no. The next one to land is is Peter. And, and I oh, think yes. I think we should say, like, the very first one to, to land is Deadpool. He gets oh, caught Oh, was he on, the first? Yeah. I feel he like he was right before on, Peter. Um, no, because he sees all of this. He sees everyone. Well, no, he's still coming down while Bedlam gets his. Uh, I know that. It's it's on, like, the sign for a motel yeah. or, or something. And he gets caught on that. And and then and then Peter lands. Yeah. And Peter Peter's fine. Like, he, he hits we the ground. We really not go into so much detail. <laughs> I'm no. just now sitting here going, like, we're telling them the movie. <laughs> no, we're, we're telling them this part. <laughs> yeah. So, Peter's fine. Sugar Bear is a okay. Yeah, and then Zeitgeist, comes Zeitgeist down. starts coming down into this cul-de-sac, right into a wood chipper. But Peter's there to help. Peter's there to save the day. He's got him by the arm. They're 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 embraced. They're clasped hands. Peter looks down at him and says, "We're X Force, right? You're gonna be okay. We're X Force, right?" Zeitgeist looks up. We're X Force. <laughs> Vomits. And he starts vomiting all over, over Peter. Peter. Like, oh my god! And god. remember, this vomit is acid. So now half of Peter's chest and his right arm are just gone. Yeah, he's dead. Sh- or, uh, Zeitgeist goes right into the wood chipper that you graphically see the meat chunks getting thrown <laughs> into the the shit. Deadpool is watching this whole fucking thing. The only person who makes it into this fucking truck is Domino, Domino, of course. Domino, whose powers are based on luck (laughs) and shit. Um, And we won't go into that whole scene. So, in this truck is a variety of different characters. Black Tom is in there, which... Holy shit, I love the jokes about Black Tom because Deadpool is so confused. I don't know if he's confused or just being sardonic, but uh, he keeps talking about how Black Tom is a black man, which he obviously... He's very clearly white, maybe a little bit of keeps, Samoan descent, keeps but he is visibly very white. Cable a racist. <laughs> and that's the other thing, is like, racist, like... Co- Calling people racist and like referring to the times and all that, yeah. like is a kind of a common joke. It's in just this movie, being, but it's thrown, played just right. It's being thrown around at random and incorrectly, but as yeah. a topical joke. Yes. So, uh, so, so Cable kills Black Tom. <laughs> so that's why that happens. That's discussed. You, you see uh, Russell Firefist. Firefist. Yes. Uh, he's in there. Uh, and now we should say earlier he has decided to make friends with the, the biggest, biggest guy, in, guy the in the icebox. Yes, and so that's what comes into play in this scene, which I felt was a little flimsy because literally all he did was slide his lunch underneath a door and then talk for like maybe forty five seconds before he's like and ushered. Then out of they there. were bros. Yeah, it, it seems like a really flimsily put together friendship. Well, at the same time, he does kind of help him get out. No, well, out. Well, he because Russell takes his ass pin. Well, he breaks himself he, he out. He breaks with himself that. out, yeah. and his, then he his, opens his prison wallet pen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. That's one of the remarks made during their planning phase. Watch out for him. He has an ass pen. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but does he does do the same? He, I, I thought it was the truck he, breaking apart. Man. No, he goes over and opens his door, and as soon as the door opens, you you see this just ridiculously large fist yeah. reach out and punch through the bot like the floor of the convoy yeah. no, into if, the ground. If no, he pulls. Fire Fist in first. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah he pulls Fire Fist in. Because he's about to be in. assassinated by Cable. He pulls Fire Fist in. And then he he punches down, like, flips the yeah. entire convoy by basically just punching through and grabbing the ground. Yeah. And, and that kind of brings us to our next, like, standstill of the, or, like, not standstill, but, uh, standoff yeah. of the movie. And, and we see. Yeah, let's not. We've been going too in detail with every single scene. Like, well, but what I was going to say, we we see who this is. Yeah. And, and like we kind of inadvertently revealed. And we see that it's Juggernaut. Yeah. Yeah. And... Which was a big thing, like, during the lead up. Like, what is this certain character from the trailer, the Juggernaut? Because you can't see him clearly who's... I think it's Deadpool who's fighting him or something, but there's like this headbutt moment in the trailer, and everyone was like, "Is this Juggernaut?" Right. It's a fucking Juggernaut, like which, complete with the the makeshift helmet. Yeah, which I found out Ryan Reynolds is voicing the Juggernaut. Really? Yeah, he he voiced the Juggernaut in this. Yeah. Uh, at least I, if I read that correctly, yeah. Uh, which I, I wish that had gotten Vinny Jones. Yeah. From uh, X3 uh, or X2. And or one th- of them. this yeah. is where one of my issues with the movie comes into play. O- on one hand, I understand getting like a, a more comic accurate juggernaut, which yeah. I feel they did. Huge uh, upper body, huge... ridiculously weird ape-like arms. Yeah. And, and just like the, the proportions and the shape of yes. his body. Yeah. Uh, that was on point. They did really well, but he was very, very blatantly layered in. CG, yeah. And, yeah and, that, and, and, and this is a good point to talk about the effects in the film. Because it, that was something we were talking about afterwards. Was yeah. There are moments where it's perfect. Cable's arm, perfect. Yeah. yeah like the, there are things that blend so seamlessly. And then, some of the Deadpool scenes are great, but then some are... Is, and the truck scene is a great example. Yeah. When he's first breaking into the truck, and he gets knocked off, and I think he gets knocked off a second time. Uh, it's just, one of the times, he goes to, to jump on the first time, and he misses. Yeah. And he go, he's on the little moped thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. going through... Like, there are some moments where... Another reference to the comics. Yeah. No. You know, he he's very CG. Like, yeah. overly, A almost. lot of that C- is sequence is just painfully CG. And then the Which, Juggernaut is another painfully I mean, CG character. I understand scenes like that. You can't just drive a military convoy through a city, yeah, through buildings, all that. A but, lot of that has to be CG. And but, you, you could also argue that like, the Colossus was very painfully cg in the first film but in, in a world where in our last movie review for infinity War, right. we're talking about how awesome the cg on thanos is how perfect it is yeah because it's even if it's josh brolin on set on stilts in a mocap suit that's like 90 percent cg mm-hmm. and you're seeing every crease every emotion every teardrop every blemish all of it there's no excuse why these characters should look so fucking bad. Right. Like they do. They look Which, they look and bad. And I honestly think that we can just attribute that to Disney money versus Fox money. Right. And and usually I'm really forgiving about the CG. I was very forgiving about Colossus with the first film, but and they they make remarks about it. So I Did I hon- yeah, like they make remarks about here comes the big CG fight. Or, oh well, yeah, they and, said that towards and, the end when but like, Colossus. I, I feel like and, there were a couple of other yeah, because Colossus and Juggernaut end up having a knockdown drag out, which I don't think Colossus could win that. No, yeah, no. I, putting co- comic logic in there, putting comic, and but honestly, 
Which, some some of the CG was very forgiving. It, yeah. it did mesh really well. Some of it not so much, and, and it distracted you. Yeah. But you know, getting back to the movie, Russell's whole plan he's now able to put into action, which is to go and kill yeah. the headmaster of the orphanage because he's teamed up with Juggernaut now. They're best friends, even though that the backtracking on that doesn't work <laughs> and uh yeah but still their best friends are gonna go fuck and up uh essex russell this entire movie has been trying to be like this big badass gangster and, uh, here's here's another thing i didn't like about the movie i hate that fucking kid and not yeah. not just as a character but i hate that fucking uh, like the acting his just voice every his voice the <laughs> acting the fact that he was unnecessarily rotund like really <laughs> damn it on, feels guys. good to be a gangster I, and like fuck like it. you know it's it, it's hard it, it it's easy to fall into any traps right now we're kind of barreling right towards it so let's talk about we're talking about a very big kid. And yeah. we're not body shaming here. Maybe he has this thing wrong with him. Maybe he has well, that thing wrong. they make the joke several times. Well, no. Like, and, and it's, you know, you can't make the argument. But let's just say right now, I don't, I you could pop in with a, his family has this history of whatever, or it may be a thyroid thing, but he is fatter than that. Yeah. He, he's unnecessarily when, big when i said at the beginning <laughs> yeah. of this that this kid is about as big as i am that yeah. wasn't really an exaggeration no this it, kid this is, is huge this is not this kid a, is like this isn't something uh, you can excuse this uh, is laziness this is slothness how big this uh, kid is chick from willy wonka Turns blueberry, into blueberry. Um, like, oh, wait, wait, wait. She Violet. Looked, yeah. Violet, yes. He yeah. almost looks like her halfway through her ballooning up. Yeah, it's... like, And, 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 and we don't mean to shit on a kid, because the dude's a kid, you know? But, dude, hit a treadmill. And Just, see, you got some money in thing. your pocket now, you got paid for a big blockbuster summer movie... Use that money. To but fix here's that. the other thing, though. When we see future him walk into that apartment and burn Cable's yeah. family alive, he is a very like slender. Yeah, well, like, I wouldn't say which, slender. I mean, slender. Grant, he, yeah, he's he has a normal robes size. on or whatever. Yeah, he he's is, a normal size. Yeah, he's he's an average weight. So we just went, we just went like three minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> this kid's way. But like, it, him, you know, I didn't like him overall. I didn't like yeah. his acting ability. I didn't like his attitude, the character. Just I fucking he, hated he everything. Very annoying about this kid. Yeah, like the whole sense of purpose Deadpool has that he has to save this kid to be reunited with Vanessa. I kind of feel bad for Deadpool having to save this kid Mm -hmm. because that's what's going to put his heart in the right place. Whatever. But by the end, and and this brings us a little into the finale of the film, by the end he, like, does turn this kid around. And that was his whole motivation there was, like, look, I, I don't know how to get into the other side of this thing. Because he's trying to get to Vanessa. We, we dip in and out of some sort of out-of-body, maybe dream experience or whatever, where he's trying to get to Vanessa, and there's this wall. Like, he, and she, it's every time he's near death. Yeah, and she's telling him, you're not ready yet. So he assumes that saving this kid, putting this kid on the right path, is well, the way to get... Because she tells him, your heart's not in the right place. Yeah. Uh, so and, he has and, to figure out, like... What's the right place for his heart? Right. And it... Uh, it's sh- apparently saving this piece of shit child. Well, uh, there's another sequence. I think it's when Juggernaut rips him in half. And he has another one of those moments. My god. <laughs> That's so great. Because he's like... He's sitting there going like, Oh my god, Juggernaut. I am the biggest fan. I love your work. And then Juggernaut's like... I'm gonna I'm- rip you in half. And he's like... That is such a juggernaut thing to say while he's being picked up and being ripped in. <laughs> it's amazing. So um, they have that other moment yeah. where she repeats to him what she said at the beginning. Kids give us a chance to be yeah. someone better or something, something along those lines. So he he takes that to mean save the kid, reunite, save the, save save the, the kid, save the kid, save myself. Yeah, yeah. He, so he alter heroes it. 
so ultimately, by the end of the movie, he selflessly saves the kid yeah, from yeah. Cable. So, okay, let's talk about uh, just trying to wrap this up because we are dragging record- on. All yeah, that. recording is at like an hour now. Let's talk about um, first the humor of the movie, which I feel like we've touched on a lot. Maybe we can like fine tune it a bit, and then we'll talk about the end of the movie. The humor of this movie, of course, it's great. Oh, what yeah. do you fucking expect? It's it's humorous it's, as shit. All the jokes, the the jokes, the references to everything outside of the movie that they can yeah. do because it's Deadpool. I think some of the jokes that don't land are the repetitive ones, the yeah. ones that are obviously playing off the first movie. Uh, some of TJ Miller's don't land. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think that's the, like, oh, fuck that guy. Because, again, fuck TJ Miller. But I don't think it's that. I think it's just they, they just don't work. Some of the reference... This one was chocked motherfucking full of references. Yeah. And jokes. And so I feel like some of them, like, especially by halfway through the movie, we were laughing at all of the ones... All like pretty much all of them, but by halfway through the movie, we're a little worn out. So there are just certain ones that we're picking yeah. up on, and by the end of the movie, we've really latched on to this is what's funny. This is just you making a reference, and so that was a little tiring. And uh, to be perfectly honest, the one of the last scenes of the movie to me, like just I w- I was started laughing. During the the first mm-hmm. part of it. Well, let, let's go ahead and, but, and bring it into the end of the movie. Uh, because I know what you're going into okay. and I got some commentary on Deadpool, that. Deadpool, yeah. he, he puts himself in a bullet's path with the power dampening collar on. Mm-hmm. to And he jumps in the path of a bullet to save the kid. Which he puts the, the collar on himself. He chooses to do that to try to, and To make a point, point to the kid. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's one of those the the kid's gonna go down the wrong path if he kills the headmaster. Devil's like, if you're gonna kill anyone, you're killing me. Yeah. So he puts the collar on. Well, Cable gets tired of the time going on and the kid about to fuck shit up. He goes to shoot him. Deadpool jumps in the way of the bullet. Hits him right in the heart. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it would have been right in the heart, I feel like I he would have died right I there. Don't but know. In, whatever. Either way, Deadpool <laughs> takes a bullet for the kid and in the it chest. is killing him. In the chesticle area. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the first thing that we can say about that is it does turn the kid around. You know, there is someone here that cares about him. Yeah. You know, he can go on a different path in life. And then Deadpool is laying there dying. The first little, yeah, you know, he wants everyone to gather around, talk to well, him a little bit. Well, yeah, well, at first they're they're gonna take the collar off, and he tells them no. Yeah, you know, like I've been working towards this, something along those lines. But uh, yeah, and then he starts going into his goodbyes. I think was it the first time he says goodbye? No, 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 no. He says something about ah, uh, what was it? Uh there's a phrase he repeats throughout the whole thing. He know. says it though, and that's like the last line before he quote unquote dies. And he lays there for a second, like you know, just kind of like tilts his head to the side a little nope. bit. Nope. You know what I was thinking of? Um, okay, spoilers for Agents of Shield, the, the I'm not season up. finale. I'm not. Don't do uh, it. Nope. I'm not gonna do it. But someone died on Agents of Shield. And they kept saying the same thing. It was really powerful. And that's what I was thinking of. Okay. Anyways, but and Deadpool is saying some shit. He dies. Kind of. But he doesn't because he's just kind yeah. of he's like, wow, that takes, that's taking a while. Yeah, but he's sitting there for like a solid like five to ten seconds and it feels like forever. And, and like, and then it, he it pops pans out. out to the rest of the, the characters for a yeah. second. And it's like, then he kind of pops back and he's like, that's taking longer than I thought. Yeah. Like, or like, it, <laughs> this is really hard to do or, or something like that. And, so and now it's funny. He, now he's chosen his moment to say his goodbyes to everyone. <laughs> and like he, he gives uh, Negasonic his Adventure Time watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he wants Colossus just to say fuck, and he does. And then he berates him for saying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he gives him shit for saying it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, he's and going that, down the line and stuff. And then, and then he, he dies. Yeah. He fades away again. But then he's but not then, quite there. That's right. And this is why it's funny. Uh, and, and what I feel like what you were about to say was that, like, it's really funny going into the first time he dies, and then the second time, maybe not so funny. 
But that's that's a classic comedy rule. It's the the rule of three. Right. And we've yes. talked about this before with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. And so I'm right with you there. And then by the third time it happens, we're laughing again. Because yeah. he's, he's popped right back out of it again. Yeah. And, and it's like he comes back with just an entirely different spiel that he's doing. And then he starts talking about the white light. And I was like... Nope, that was no, the sun. Don't the, stare directly into the, the sun, third, guys. The third time he's going through all the classic dying tropes, but then rifting on them until he does finally expire for real. Yeah, um, and you you see this really nice scene of him re like he makes it through this barrier. Yeah, he finally he's gets Ryan the Reynolds there. again. Yes, he is full. <laughs> he's full on Reynolds. And uh, he's past the barrier, and he's finally connected with Vanessa. And before you know it, like, things are starting to turn sour, and you can tell on the expression on her face that... Well, because if you may not... Well, well, I'm remembering this out of order, yes. I Uh, know I am going... Yeah. yeah, Uh, this up. Cable, like, he he made the statement. He had two charges on his, his ability to time travel. One to take him to that point in time, one to take him home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, instead, he uses it... Well, no, 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 that's not until... That, that that's is not until after, after the scene, though. Oh, no, it's... Yeah, a, yeah it's, they inject right it in the middle of the scene. Yes, he, yes, 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 He goes, and he turns it, rewinds it to, like, before they, they start this fight at the orphanarium, mm-hmm. whatever, the orphanage... I've watched too much Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he slides uh, the uh, token. The skee-ball token. The skee-ball token. High-grade lead. Yeah, which is high-grade lead. Uh, right which into is the a spot. Joke from oh. very early in the movie, which we're not going to go into. <laughs> you're you're going to see it. Anyways. Or you've already seen it, so whatever. Uh, yeah. So he slides right that shit the spot there, yeah. that he's going to shoot Deadpool. Which I thought was amazing. A, a, just such a great way for them to use time travel to give the ha- the technical happy ending. Because once he does this, this is the moment when Vanessa's face starts changing and stuff. And, and she realizes it's that it's not time and stuff. And he's confused and upset, but... He understands, because I feel like they're in the state of euphoria yeah. as well. And then, of course, right before he has to leave from being dead, yeah, they pull the classic "kiss me like you miss me," yeah, and they have their last dead Big moment together, out moment, yeah. And he gets ripped back to reality yep. d- when that happens. He he does not let up on cables like you did for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's 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 a pretty great way to use that time travel, and I guess Cable's decided to stick around, which maybe maybe we'll get a Deadpool three. I don't know because they they have made the joke, well, you know, stop it too. You nailed it. You know, we uh, we are getting the X Force spinoff. There's an X Force spinoff, but it is definitely not this X Force. No, well, well. Not- We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. So they're they're all you know Deadpool's not dead. Yep. They they have all like this is their family. Vanessa even makes out your family is waiting for you. Mm-hmm. They're walking away and here the headmaster pops out and he, oh, he no. starts. We, we fuck all that. We we can. Depender kills him. <laughs> we we can skip past that. Uh, again, you know, either they're gonna go see it or they've already seen it, so they don't have That's to go fine. through everything. But let's talk about the after credit scene. Okay, so or the mid credit. I would say to to everyone who hasn't seen it, if you've listened this whole way, well, you're stupid. <laughs> but there's no end credit scene. N- no it's, absolute end credits. Uh, like there's no except, after except credits. for the song that and during the movie this is during <laughs> yes. uh this is Juggernaut's assault on the SX building and I pointed out to you maybe tw- like halfway through the song that it was like holy and, shit holy shit and it's this big operatic song yeah and, it's and saying, I didn't even oh, holy catch it. shit <laughs> it's, like yeah. I just hear that this. The music, yeah. as I'm watching the scene unfold and everything else, I don't even pay attention that it's going, oh, You're, holy it, it shit balls been, and everything. Dovakin, Zugavin, 
So, yeah. Like, so you, far, you, I don't know what the Skyrim like just song is. Your typical yeah. Latin. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but no. I pointed it out to you during that scene. And then if you stay throughout the entire credits, that's they the last song that plays. And it's hilarious because it's a song about, holy shit, it's the Juggernaut. <laughs> so he's going to fuck some shit up. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I'm remembering that in the wrong tempo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I could listen to that on repeat. Yeah. I, I really could. It. But the mid credit scene, however. So... You what is you have Negasonic and Yukio? Yukio. Yes. The, okay, when I first heard her introduce, I thought she was like, "This is Yukio." I'm like, "That's a little racist." <laughs> <laughs> and you would know. <laughs> I would know. You become the racist guy. Of the podcast. So they're working on uh, uh, Cable's time travel device. Yeah. And they fix it, and they give it to Deadpool. And immediate, as soon as they give it back to Deadpool, they're like, oh, God, what have we done? Really? really why did they do that in the first place? But it, who cares? It, because they use it in so, a very fun way. So the first thing he does is he goes back and saves Vanessa. Yes. And kills the guy with the cream cheese spreader. With the cream cheese Which spreader. was very satisfying. <laughs> yeah. So that's the first thing he does. And then he turns it... To when the X Force is landing, <laughs> he doesn't save anyone else. He warns Peter. He it, just walk away. Just goes back to the part where he's on the billboard right before Peter is about to save uh, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, and he's like, "Peter, no! Just turn, just away. turn away. Walk. Just go home, Sugar Bear. <laughs> yeah. Just go home." And uh, Peter walks away and goes home. Then he goes a little further back. To a time of origin. Wolverine origins, I might <laughs> specify. And he kills the Wolverine origins version of Deadpool. Uh, and, and this, we actually do get to see Hugh Jackman in the movie. But it is so obviously just ripped footage from it is. X-Men Origins Wolverine. And then, so he empties an entire clip into this <laughs> origins Deadpool. <laughs> And then he just kind of like shuffles back off to the side. And he has a little bit of a, a, a quip there or something. But yeah, yeah. He, he just fires into this guy and leaves. And, and then, then the was, next one, you see Ryan Reynolds. You see Ryan Reynolds. And he, he's, he finishes he writing something. Holy shit. No, he's not finishing writing something. I, I feel or like he's, he's been handed the script because he didn't write that film. But uh, he's been handed, the, he's looking at the script for something and he, he says, we've made it. Or this is going to be it. Or something like yeah. that. And then he, he the closes fucking... the, the book. It's the script for Green Lantern. Well, no. We don't see that until his brains are flying out the front of his face. Yeah, yeah. And his blood is flying all over the script. And you see that it's Green Lantern. And it's Deadpool has killed Ryan Reynolds before he can do Green Lantern. So he's not only fixed some of the X-Men continuity, but he also fixed some of the DC movie continuity. <laughs> Uh, and fix his own movie at the same time. Yeah. So what so, better way could you you end the thing without death, Deadpool going back in time fixing everything? <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's that's the movie. So uh, now that we've broken it down, I, I feel like I have to ask because my opinion hasn't changed. Has your opinion on the level of like from seven point five to eight, which was your ranking, has that changed? Thinking thinking more. Mostly about Russell. Like, I, I have kind of come to terms with, he does bring the score down a little bit. Yeah. But not not so much where I can, I can sit at a solid seven. Okay. Uh, and, and walk away from it. Still happy with everything else. Uh, kind of wish that they wouldn't have picked that kid to be Russell. But I, I understand why they did for the movie, for the jokes that are made. For the ass like they cast him because if they cast him for the jokes, for the fat jokes, then that's a really shitty way to get. Like, <laughs> see, like I mean, we, we we've kind of crossed the line here on this podcast <laughs> that subject ourselves, but still, like you know, we're not putting, we're not casting a chubby kid just to make fun of him, right? You know, so that I don't feel like that's why he got cast. Maybe it was. I don't know. But yeah, but that uh, is, I mean, that I, is I still thing. sit at a solid seven. Okay, maybe seven. I feel like still. mine has now gone between a six to seven 
<laughs> Porter. <laughs> Giving it a little uh, bit of a broader range. Yeah, uh, six to seven. <laughs> But now remember, I did say six point five is my baseline, so my yeah. baseline has dropped. To... Well, and honestly, for me, going from like the first time seeing it, trying to take everything in and all yeah. that, the you know, I do want to see this again while it's still in theaters. Yeah, uh, one for the opportunity to hunt for the Easter eggs that we all know are going to be in there, right? And to get a okay, I know the story, I know what's going on. To take in more specific points of the movie. I I would say that it is worth a second viewing, maybe in theaters even. I'll agree with you there. Not because of quality, not like Infinity War, which like I might see it a third time. Right. Uh, I've already seen it twice in theaters. I'm totally down for giving it a third chance. Posting our episode around, I was asking people, how many times have you gone and seen it? Someone fired back with six times in the first fucking week. Wow. And I was like, wow, that guy needs to get a life. But at the same time, <laughs> I don't disagree with the the, the action. Yeah. So, But uh, this is definitely not that quality. But, no. you know, it was fun. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you've listened this far, like, come on, dude. What are you doing to yourself? You're playing too much into this, like, over, uh, over-saturated culture that we're living in. You're kind of the problem. But... Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, we, we question your thought process and your you know your values in life. Right. But we still appreciate right. you. But we, we definitely suggest that you go see this for yourself. But before you do that, like this episode if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that bell below if you want to know when the newest videos go up. And comment your thoughts on Deadpool 2 or even Deadpool 1. Let us know what you thought. And, of course, please share this episode on social media. Guys, my name is Vincent Herman, Vin the Human. James Odell, Alpha Spectre. And cue that not-so-fit-for-a-roten-kid outro music. Thank you.